Hi, welcome to my latest VR scouting project, Mushrooms. The models for scouting in Codon, concept art in Photoshop, the lighting composition and volumetrics were handled in Blender, mesh cleanup in Instant Mesh, and textures were done in Substance Painter and Designer. So this is what the final composition looks like in Blender. But let's get started at the beginning this time, with uh, concept art. Here you see me doodling a bunch of thumbnails, before finding a couple of characters that I like and start building a little story around. This ended up being a piece about intimacy, which of course can become, be a complicated prospect, especially in these strange times. I'm sure you noticed, but uh, this will be uh, another sort of time-lapse thing. The goal uh, with uh, this project was to get more comfortable with the workflow that I set up in my spooky project and to start expanding it with uh, real-time rendering in mind. Uh, hopefully I'll start introducing this type of art assets uh, into Unity projects soon. So, with uh, the concept art in place, let's jump into Codon and start sculpting. I start out by blocking, blocking out the rough shape of our potato man. Uh, I took to calling him uh, Swamp Ross uh, over the course of the project. Swamp uh, being the Swedish word for mushroom and Ross. Well, <laughs> I'm sure you can figure out where that came from. So, with uh, Swamp Ross mostly done, let's move on over to our other protagonist, Smok. Which uh, was inspired by those puffy, they are literally called smoke mushrooms in Swedish. Not sure about the English name, but uh, they puff out this uh, cloud of spores when something disturbs them. Uh, something that I found very fascinating. As a young kid out exploring the Swedish pine woods. And that's a uh, smoke. Now, uh, Swamp Ross, of course, needs the bright flower, uh, which is what uh, spooks the shit out of Smok, uh, <laughs> who was uh, quite content in the dark woods. Sculpting uh, things like 
the tree here uh, that I'm starting on is when the VR sculpting really shines. I'm still, I'm just blown away by how intuitive and how, how incredibly quickly you can create complex models like this. It's, yeah, it's something you, you gotta experience to really, to really get how, how amazing this is. It's so incredibly fun <laughs> and relaxing. Just, um, I mean, just look at that. This was uh, less than an hour of uh, just playing around. Once I got a bit started on the composition and so on, I, I realized that I needed some type of uh, foreground elements as well. So I started sculpting these... I don't know exactly what to call them, but they kind of look like uh, the old bunker they call them in Swedish. Snake baskets? I have no idea. Um, it's sort of nice, swirly <laughs> plant things. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that's what I ended up doing. So, um, back in Blender with uh, the imported assets. And let's take a little moment to uh, <laughs> mention well, I said earlier that I'm using instant mesh for the mesh cleanups and that's due to this little issue here that I was showing with the tree. It's uh, something to do with how uh, Quadon handles uh, very large models, which is uh, something I was working with for this project. I really wanted to try and up the resolution and get more details into my work. I'm also a bit of an oddball since I'm only working in uh, the uh, volume sculpting of Cordon. They of course have more traditional sculpting tools as well but I'm I, I really like working with <laughs> the volume. It's so much fun. I come from a uh, traditional uh, sort of uh, art schooling so it's uh, great to be able to go back to those old uh, instincts, or what you want to call them, that I developed while working with actual clay, and the volume sculpting is really what comes closest to that. Uh, anyway, you see me here um, looking at how the original model looked versus how these cleaned up models look like once I run them through instant mesh, and it's so clean. You can see how this uh, topology allows me to actually go in and do proper unwrappings this this time. Last time on the spooky project, my uh, well, <laughs> let's just say my UV work left uh, some things to be desired. But uh, this time I'm actually making some proper UV maps and uh, I'm also using UV Packer 2 in Blender which is this fantastic little plugin that I found while working on this project. The same goes for Instant Mesh. I, I had no experience with it before uh, starting to look into how to clean up these models with uh, the little issues uh, they have once they come out of Codon. And of course, I gotta mention, Codon is a, a early access software still, so I'm sure they're working on fixing these little uh, kinks that's worked in here and there. And overall, I'm a huge fan of Cordon. I'm so glad that uh, tools like this exist. And um, here you can see me working on the texturing for Smock, uh, of course. And I, <laughs> well, there wasn't really any good uh, preset materials for uh, what I wanted, which is uh, a sort of <laughs> I don't want to say slimy, uh, this wet surfaced mushroom. <laughs> mm, yeah, right. 
So I actually ended up going with a latex material, which I then uh, tweaked, changed the coloring, added some grime in the cre crevices and so on. And now I've uh, moved on to the, uh, the ground. I'm just using this simple generated uh, cloud texture with a displacement modifier. And making some tweaks to make sure that the character's feet are actually <laughs> touching the ground. And after this I ended up using a uh, hair particle system in uh, Blender to create the sort of uh, thick moss uh, or almost grass uh, that's covering the surface. I also wanted to do some volumetrics, which, uh, well, this sort of mist cover. And here I'm experimenting with using a force uh, field to push away the uh, smoke. I wanted this sort of uh, bubble effect, like almost like the light is uh, displacing the smoke. And as you can see, uh, for force modifier, probably not the way to go. Instead, I moved to actually just putting in a hidden uh, collision sphere. And uh, this uh, gave a lot, a result that I was a lot happier with. You can see how the fog is moving around this area by the flower. After tweaking the settings for a while, I started to get a better fog. That's um, more what I was looking for, this flowing, uh, slow, uh, atmospheric. Here we go. That This is where I'm starting to feel happy with it. So I took the uh, emitters for the, that's actually sending out the fog into the scene and move them up behind a couple of trees so they can't be seen by the camera and uh, use those to composite this nice scene. And here's the uh, puff of smoke, of course, coming out of the top of uh, uh, the spooked smock character. I ended up just making a mesh with a simple displacement modifier and then these really nice mesh to volume tools that they pretty recently introduced into Blender. And uh, they gave it this nice smoke ring effect without me actually having to simulate anything. So if you go back to the beginning with the little animation with the camera panning, you can actually see that the, the smoke ring is the stationary. But, uh, well, this has been yet another project by me and Thank you so much for watching. I'm really looking forward to the next one. And all that's remaining are these renders showing uh, how the pro project progresses. So thanks again and until next time. <laughs>